So let's visualize this code. Uh, I will click on next. Uh, we define the is prime helper function and now we are defining the uh, prime product function and now finally we call the prime product function with this list. In this list, 1 of course is not a prime, 2 is a prime, 13 is a prime and 21 is not a prime. So the answer we are expecting is 2 times 13 or 26. Let us see how this works. We first have to call the prime product function with this list. So how is this going to work? We are going to first initialize our accumulator variable product equals 1. So when I click on next, I get product initialized to 1. Now I am going to examine each item i in this list. So the first value that i is going to take is of course the integer 1. So i is 1 and now we ask is 1 a prime number? We will have to call the helper function. When we call this function, we are in the is prime function where the parameter n is initialized to the argument 1. Now is 1 a prime number? No, because it is smaller than 2 n is smaller than 2, so we will immediately return false, we will not bother going into this loop. Notice here in the helper function, I have actually calculated the square root of n just to make it a little bit easier for us to see what values are going to be examined over here. Anyway, in this case we return false, since this value false is used in this if condition, this if condition is, in, is false. So what is going to happen to the red arrow when this value is returned here? Well, pay attention when I click on next. The red arrow has jumped to the line 12. The green arrow is indicating that we just did this statement, but this value was false. So this if condition is no longer true. And so we will move to the next value of i. So the red arrow is at line 12. This can be a little bit tricky to understand. I encourage you to try this yourself. Make sure you can follow this control flow. There are many things going on here. But let's continue with the next value of i. The next value of i in this list is 2. Is 2 a prime number? Well, let's call the helper function. The helper function comes to this statement and it realizes that this n, 2, is not less than 2, so we'll skip ahead. Now what is the square root of 2? Well it's 1.4 something 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 but when you convert that into an int you discard or truncate everything after the decimal and so square root of n is just going to be 1. Now we are going to search for all values of i in the range starting at 2 up to but not including 1 plus 1 which is 2. So how many integers are in the range starting at 2 up to but not including 2? Well there are no integers. So we are going to try and find such an integer. We are going to fail. So the red arrow is going to skip past the body of the for loop and immediately come here and we are going to declare this to be true. We were unable to find a factor of 2 in the range from 2 up to square root of so indeed that's correct, 2 is a prime number, so we will return true. This value will be used in this if condition. Since it's true, the red arrow will jump to line 14. We are inside the if condition and we take our product, the accumulator, which was initialized to 1 and we multiply it with 2. So now the product becomes 2 and we move to the next value of i. The next value of i is 13. We know it's a prime number, but let's confirm. We'll go to the is prime function. We'll find that 13 is not smaller than 2, so we will come here. We will calculate the square root of 13. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root of 13 is 3 point something. Once again, when we convert that to an integer, that just becomes 3. So our for loop is going to examine integers in the range starting at 2 up to but not including 3 plus 1. So it's just going to look at 2 and 3. Now is 2 a factor of 13? No it isn't, 13 is an odd number. So we examine 3. Is 3 a factor 
of 13? No, it's not. So again, the red arrow comes up here because we have to check if there are more values to look at. In this case, there are no more values to look at. So the red arrow comes out here and once again, we return true. 13 is a prime. And since it's a prime, we will take 13 and multiply it into our accumulator and our accumulator now becomes 26. We look at the next item in this data and that's 21. 21 is not a prime. Let's see why. It's not less than 2. So we calculate the square root of 21 and truncate and that gives us the value 4. Remember 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is larger than 21. It's 25. So we will examine all the items in the range 2 to 4 plus 1, meaning just 2, 3 and 4. 2 is not a factor of 21, so we will try the next factor which is 3, but 3 is a factor of 21. So this if condition is going to be true. We will come in here and return false. 21 is not a prime, we have found a factor, namely 3. So we will return false. This if condition is not true, so we don't modify our accumulator. We move on to the next item in data. Remember, we always have to come back here and check, is there another item? There is no more item, so now the red arrow jumps to the end and we return our product, which is 26. And that value is what's going to get printed finally. Uh, after we return, that value is going to get printed over here. So this is a complex example. We can of course write code that is even more complex than this, but we must first get comfortable with understanding control flow. This example connects together helper functions and iteration. We have two for loops here, one in this function and one in the helper function. So the control flow is complex to understand unless you have been practicing up to now. If you find yourself getting completely lost at this point, I strongly recommend that you pause. There's no point continuing and getting more confused. Please go back to earlier lectures where you feel you are understanding these concepts well. Make sure you redo those visualizations, make sure you can understand them well, and then come to this point and proceed from here.